If you're struggling to rank your business on Google, I'm going to share with you my 10 most actionable tips to improve your small business and get found on Google to get more customers. Now, hi, I'm Mike Zima and I'm a chief marketing officer and I do SEO day in and day out. And there are some things you need to do consistently to polish your business and make it found on Google. It may seem complex, but I'm going to break down some of the most important pillars in this video. It's 10 steps. They're easy to follow and you can do them out of sequence. These are the ones that I want you to concentrate on and I'm going to dive into each and every one of them now. So here are my top 10 tips for SMBs. What you really have to look at is this list is out of sequence, right? I'm listing them out in no particular order. So don't get stuck on three or four if you can't keep the ball moving. But number one is the most important one. If you're a local business, Google My Business is going to be number one. There's a ton of review sites, but why Google My Business is important is because it integrates with the entire Google marketing platform. So getting your Google business set up, optimizing it, and using all the features. They have social media posts, they have landing pages, you can actually list your e-commerce products there. You can do a whole lot of things depending on your industry. So that's one you really need to focus on. And 80% of your results from local SEO is going to come from Google My Business and reviews. If you have a Google My Business and you have several reviews and you're consistently engaging with customers and you're earning great reviews and you're actually trying to nurture and get more reviews, you're going to start coming up in search. This works for my business. This works for everyone's business. The reviews count and it's like a vote for your website. But that's really tangible to achieve. But number three, you have to really put your marketing and sales hat on and figure out what's search intent. It might be a complex theory, but once you figure out search intent, it starts to unravel some of the next steps in this series. Search intent is what does a person do in order to find your business? Does something happen? Is there a sense of urgency? Is there something seasonal that they do every year at a certain time of year? And you have to really take in those factors and go into Google and find your competitors, right? So figure out the search intent, write this down and make observations on keywords, interesting ads you make. You can even do screenshots too and put it into a folder so you don't have scraps of paper like me. Anyways, competitors are really useful because they give you the keys to their success. Look at the top three competitors that are not national competitors. You know who they are, they're outbidding you on proposals and it leaves you scratching your head and what's happening. Because when the search intent phase happens for a customer, they're finding your competitors because they find something that brings you to the competitor, which is gonna be a piece of communication or an ad, or they're getting there because once they land on a competitor, they're fulfilled with everything they find on the website and they don't wanna keep going and keep looking. So that's why it's important to really start shifting from this search intent. Okay, you know how people are going to find your business. You know what they're looking for. You know what to offer them because you're the expert, but you're scratching your head about digital marketing. Well, the easiest, lowest hanging fruit is you can do keyword planner. Right? This is a tool from Google Ads that shows you what keywords cost and what people are bidding on and how much search volume, which gives you some expectations. Okay, maybe there's 500 people, maybe there's 100 people looking for your service around the Chicagoland area, for example. And this helps you take your search intent. Okay, I know what customers are doing and you can start crafting those into keywords and seeing what people are bidding on Google. Of course, you can use the keyword planner to help you leverage and maximize results on Google Ads. But when you go through the tutorial, you'll actually find out that this is a useful SEO tool, right? This is a 101 tool, it's a free tool, and it helps you understand what's going on. So you know what your customers are looking for, you know who your competitors are, you have some keywords, right? Now you gotta put that on your website. Oh Mike, how do I put that on my website? Well, anywhere there's text on your website, whether it's visible to humans or hidden and only visible to robots from Google, that's where you put the text in. And the most bite-sized way to approach it is take your keywords, based off of the search intent, what your customers are looking for, and see what competitors are writing on social media and on their website, and write non-sales content. This is important. A lot of businesses get stuck on selling on their website when Google is basically, you know, their mission statement is answers in one click, right? So what does that mean? You have to create a piece of communication that resonates with your customer. So if you're a plumber, how to clean your drain in three simple steps, right? Piece of communication, you're not gonna get national exposure, but if someone has a, a drain clogged with hair, 
Well, voila, you have a piece of communication. They're going into Google and they're coming into your website and starting to go into your funnel and your marketing machine. The machine is small, but with these steps, you're going to grow it to a big one. You're going to start creating that content. You're going to write that how to clean your drain content and make sure you're sharing it on social media. Social media backlinks, mentions pointing back to your website are important because social media is basically the litmus test to see if a business is legit or not. If you are in business, you have a ton of reviews, but you're neglecting on social media, then you're neglecting a persona that's going to go through and audit a potential partner. They're going to look at your website. They're going to look at your social media. They're going to look at your reviews. And if you're two for three or four for seven, you want to make sure you're really checking all the boxes and you're competing with your competitors. That's the whole point of having competitors. Now you have a strategy. You're starting to activate your website. Remember your website is not just a brochure. You want to think of it as a binder. You want to grow it to the point where it answers every single one of the business questions a customer may ask you, and you can always refer them back to your website. And it's important to bring people back to your website because then you can continue marketing. The website audit, that's a great first step. If you need a website audit, you can click the link here and actually dive into a website audit and we'll prepare a website audit for you and give you some homework. Yeah, I know, Mike, I don't want to do any more homework because I'm not in high school or college anymore. Well, that's a part of digital marketing. You're going to have to learn new things and you're not going to like it, but it's going to be fun once you have that aha, that breakthrough, that realization that digital marketing isn't hard. It's about the consistency and a couple of technical things on your website are really easy to resolve. Now, number nine, backlinks. This is a really confusing one. Most people that don't understand SEO really are on the fringes of what are backlink building. And really, this is what you got to do. Find your local blogs. Find people on Instagram that are essentially influencers in your city, right? Go down and see if the Skokie newspaper is going to do a story about your business and actually feature you. Because the more times your website and business is featured, for example, in the media, in the news, on social media, by a third party, because you're negotiating with somebody or you're getting some sort of a piece of marketing on a website. A really simple one is if a blog or a local newspaper wrote an article about your business and linked back to you, and this helps you come up in Google, right? You want other businesses to talk about you. You want other websites to talk about you because Google is a machine and it needs to figure out that, aha, yeah, they, this is a plumber business. This is a restaurant. It's really popular. It's more than just reviews and it starts to consolidate and factor in all of these things. So local backlinks are press, right? Anytime you can get a media spot with a link back to your website or any sort of press and attention, you want to feature that on your website. You want to make sure third parties are featuring you, your business on their website, pointing back to yours. And then finally, number 10, and this goes back to competitors as well, steal a better call to action. A lot of the time, it might not be anything other than just a poor funnel and a poor way to convert users. So if people are coming to your website, it's too hard for them to find the form. It's too hard for them to call you. It's too hard for them to actually get in touch with somebody. If you have all this friction, well, the first two or three competitors that are going to get back to this particular prospect are going to beat you just right there. So you have to go to their websites and see what are their call to actions? Are they doing free estimates? Are they doing this? Are they doing that? Can you do something better? Can you actually improve upon it? Because you know it's working for them. It should work for you. So a lot of this, as I said, is consistency. But if you're focusing on Google My Business, earning testimonials and sharing your business yourself on social media or with the help of third parties and news publications, you're going to have a well-rounded marketing program. This is something you can do yourself. You don't have to do it all at once. You can knock out one of these every single month and make it a recurring task. But just be aware, these are the 10 tips I would recommend for your business. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment below about which one of these tips works the best for your business. And I'll make another video and do a deep dive into it. Thanks for watching. If you're still unsure about your digital marketing question, be sure to request a free marketing audit from Zima Media, where one of our marketing consultants will create a personalized video response and address every single one of the smart marketing opportunities to grow your business.